You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. As always, grateful to be here with you. Yes, and uh, my name my name is Rob. I'm never sure quite where we're gonna go with the intro, but uh, it's always an adventure having a good time around here. And uh, I'm excited about this show because you're excited about this show and the question, and you uh, dig this kind of stuff, and I dig learning about it. So hopefully you all do as well because it is a good question. It is a very good question, uh, indeed. That being said, very excited to be here, very excited and grateful to go over this. We're gonna be talking today about when you're producing videos for your clients. Um, this particular person asked a question about when to use what transitions. You know, we've kind of talked about this before, but I think that based off even the work that I've done in the last year and the work that I was doing this year until this virus hit and shut down all the productions, Frankly, there, it, there, is a, there is so much um, discernment in this question. And this really goes back to the fundamentals of business, right? Everyone is so focused on how do you sell what you sell rather than focusing on who are you selling it to? Because when you know who and you can better learn who those people are, what interests them, what speaks to them, well, then you're going to be much better off than being able to sell your product. So today's show, I think, is actually going to be quite interesting because I feel like my position has evolved on this. Mm. Um, because in when it comes to videography, when it comes to editing and producing these videos and some of these questions, a lot of times it depends. It depends on the audience. Are they old? Are they baby boomer? Are they your generation? Are they your generation with kids? Because then those type of people are going to like more modern style productions. There's so much uh, to this question, but that's why it excites me. Because over time, I have learned that while you do want to speak to the audience, you can also lead the audience. Sure. If you lead the audience too much, though, that can be problematic, as I've learned. Yeah, I was just going to say, when you say the audience, you're talking the client? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I also, uh, sort of a, a bit of an aside on that is lead them to figure it out themselves, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. And I mean, I, and so are you saying that like if you have a client and to answer this question that we haven't got to yet, you, you know, you're trying to figure out what the client likes. So you ask them to send to send videos of examples of like what they're thinking about. Because well, as a videographer, I ask people to do that all the time. I think that's a great idea. But ultimately, it just comes down to asking the right questions. And uh, I actually do have some things to say about that, but maybe we should listen to the question first. All right, and you're then... right. We should probably, before we go too far down the rabbit hole. Hello, my name is Matthew Beck. I'm a journalist and videographer in upstate New York. I was wondering for other people out there, uh, what should be the top things they're looking at for, to give quality video to a client? Should it be things like proper color grading, shot placement in their timeline, how to avoid a jump cut, or the proper use of cutaways to be able to tell the best story in their video? Thank you. Hmm, thank you for the question. Um, I really think, Paul, that, and I don't know if this is how you're approaching this in your mind, but I wonder if we can answer it really in two different ways. And so one way is just sort of rules of thumb as to what a solid video would include, because I kind of get that from him, that that's what he's asking. But then I think the deeper level is kind of what you went to in your mind right away, which is how do we really pull out of the client what they want and make sure we give them the best product that we can. Does that make sense? Um, I think so. I mean, are there certain elements of a video, he mentioned a few, cutouts, whatever, that you want to, so maybe it's okay. like the the one third rule in photography, right? That's something that you pretty much apply in many cases. Not all, nothing is always. But anyways, I'm just trying to, to segregate between a rule of thumb that a good video will have. He mentioned color grading. Obviously, you want to have good color, those kinds of things, versus kind of the deeper... Um, deeper digging into what a client actually wants and needs as sort of the next level. 
<sighs> there is a lot packed in that question. Number one is, you know, he asked questions about color. He asked questions about jump cuts. He asked questions about like this, that, and the other. I think what I'm going to do is showcase the practical workflow that I use from start to finish, meaning when the client tells me they want something, what do I collect and aggregate? And then what is the practical workflow of editing the footage? I'm going to skip the filming part, editing the footage and speaking to the customer and answering those questions, but in an order that makes sense. Okay. So first off, um, if let's say that I'm doing a real estate job, high end luxury real estate, because that's very different from the real estate videos that you see pretty much everywhere else. Luxury real estate, they really focus on the craft. They really focus on, okay, I want to see water features. I want to see color like sunset. I want the perfect lighting to showcase the inside and the outside, right? So right away, you're shooting a sunset, that's it. You're probably also going to have to bring lights, right? So luxury real estate I brought up though, because typically as a pilot, you have to aggregate information from the client as far as what's the style, what do they like to see, but you also have to be able to mimic that. And you also have to be able to discern the right tools in the toolbox for this particular client. So here's what I mean. Luxury real estate, people are going to be more finicky about the types of shots. You have a very different audience. The audience, like the realtor, is probably going to be older. They like smoothness. They like sexy. They like flashy. But they want to see it slow because they don't want to get sick watching your video. Okay? <laughs> so typically what I'll do is say, okay, send me some videos that you like. I also bring up luxury real estate because some luxury real estates really want to see like the hyper modern California luxury real estate shooting, which is like utilizing almost action sports like transitions in all the shots and really being dynamic with the movements. So again, step one, find out from the client, give me three examples or at least two of things that you like and that you want to see. And then number two is interpretation, right? Looking at the property. Okay. What are the features? Typically with real estate, you want to showcase location, land, water, amenities, period. Okay. With ranches, it's grass, animals, water, land. In that order. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but so you have to know when I say about the audience in luxury real estate, right? We're gonna be making much slower motions. So we've got the we've got the stylistic stuff. Okay, we've seen what they like. Um, we have discerned. Okay, they really want the most color in the shots. So we've got to shoot at sunset. So let's get to the practical answer to this guy's questions, right? So as far as editing is concerned, what about jump cuts? What about transitions? What about what footage to put where? Okay, well let's focus on what are the goals of the the realtor? It's to sell. How do they sell? Why? Water, space, amenities, location, where is that area in regards to other areas? What is the proximity, right? So we have to focus on beauty, color, which means like our shots have to be perfectly exposed and the exposure value cannot change. Okay, I see this, I see this error almost everywhere. I would say, I would say with a high degree of confidence, over 90% of most real estate videos is you have exposure values changing because everyone uses auto or even like Paul, like me, who made mistakes using aperture priority. I'm just full manual now. Um, mm. After Josh said something about shutter priority, it just really made me think and to isolate a lot of problems, just shoot in manual. It's just so much easier. Um, because you don't get these these crazy shifts in color and whatnot. So uh, let's see, where was I? We've got the style from the realtor. We're editing the video. We're focusing on what they need to show in order to sell the house, amenities, color, proximity, location. So as far as like transitions are concerned, he asked a question like, should I try to avoid a jump cut? Like what? Like what? What? Like why would you want to avoid a jump cut? I think what he means by a jump cut is when you end one particular shot. Like, let's say that you're doing like a half moon from out, from outside <laughs> of the building to the inside of the building, right? And we're now flying like inside. And let's say like right at the last moment, all of a sudden the, the camera just yaws like hard, like five degrees, right? That would be an awkward jump cut. Cut. But jump cuts can also mean that you literally end the action at one point and start 
the action in another point, and that's a quote-unquote jump cut. I have heard the term used in both ways, so in an effort to clarify, jump cuts, and what I understand a jump cut is, is you literally end a shot and start a new one at a, at a different place. So, you know, that being said, um, I think it's just so critical to understand that you have to speak to the audience. Here's what I mean. The luxury real estate, right? We have baby boomers, but typically the people buying this type of real estate who are baby boomers, they are going to want slow camera motions. They are going to want you. They want to be shown, um, you know, a very specific style and they want it to be smooth. So we don't want to use a lot of transitions like um, uh, what is it called? A cross dissolve and a fade to black why? Because those people are going to think about all the movies and videos they've ever seen in the 90s and the 80s and what a, a fade to black meant, what a cross fade meant, which typically would showcase a change in time, right? You know, um, so you got to be really careful about, again, the audience. How do they perceive video, right? The luxury baby boomer audience is probably going to be more keen to more modern style videography because they are probably a little bit more sophisticated themselves, which means jump cuts. If you don't mean awkward jump cuts and you mean like actually stopping footage here and, and starting your next select right up against it without a transition, you can do that shit all day long. So, I mean, that that's good. Now, that being said, the way that I edit is like this. I take all my selects first. So I don't care who the client is. I am only as good as my last video. So I'm always only showing the smoothest of the smooth, the buttery of the buttery, the practically melting off the stick good. Okay. Then what I do is I put all those clips together in my timeline. This is before any sound, any music, anything like that. Just setting up my clips, right? And then once I've gone through all the footage and I have all the selects, I will typically take the very best best of all of those selects that I put in the timeline and throw them towards the beginning because mm. you want to engage the person right away. And then at the end, you want to summarize. So those shots can typically be used twice. Um, and you can change how many times those shots can be used depending on what you do with the footage, speed ramping it, etc. So that being said, once I've thrown all the clips in the timeline, now I'm going to go ahead and add music. This is where I actually throw down my music track and then I'm going to be trimming the selects to essentially work with the beat, right? So here's the thing. Let me play. Let me actually see if I have any of my uh, ranch stuff uh, here. So here's one. Um, this is an older one, by the way. But let's see. Yeah, so watch this, Rob. I need you to pay attention for a second. Listen to the drops. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, see? Bum. Like it's, look, music is an algorithmic or well, an and algorithm. I think one of the reasons you do that is because you, I'm not sure how to put this into words, but. If you do it right, then it, it engages them each time. It keep, as opposed to throwing them off, like exactly. subconsciously they're going, wait a minute, that's not right. Mm. That's not right. <laughs> you it's know? like feeling pain without there being pain. Yeah. And if so, if that's off, then it's going to, you're going to divert their attention instead of keep their attention. Exactly. Which is why the video has to flow. And if we think about songs being mathematic, mathematical equations, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, mm -hmm. three, four. Like literally. Yeah. I mean, think of dances you learn, two step, waltz, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's always numbered like that. Exactly. So that's, so you have to think about your shot selection in the same way, right? Like intro to the video, dun, 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 shot change, dun, 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 shot change. Dun, 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 shot change. Dun, dun, dun. You see what I'm saying? Totally. So can we go into the music a little bit right here? Or do you want to keep flowing? <laughs> I want to keep flowing, but okay. you make a really good point about music because the music has to be accepted again by the audience. And we're not talking about the client. While the client does think that they're in charge, once you play the power role of, well, don't you want to sell more? And you put the problem on them using your open-ended calibrated questions. You say, well, typically your audience likes X, Y, and Z. So that being said, there are some realtors you'll never get past that. So you're ultimately making the realtor happy. But when it comes to music, it should really speak to the audience, not necessarily the client as the audience, but the audience of the client. So 
for example, these big ranches, right? You yeah. just heard a bunch of Western music. Sure. Why? Well, the audience, That's who's right? going to be listening, watching it, yeah. So what's your question about the music in the audience? Well, I was just going to have you go into a little bit about, and you basically just did, sort of your thought process when you're choosing the music. I mean, I think there's some obvious stuff, like who your audience is, but is there anything deeper than that in terms of the beats and just how do you think about selecting music? I mean, kind of I'll leave it to you generally that way, but... Um, I actually just go listen to music before I start editing and I'll play a song for 20 seconds. And if I like it, I start it. And then like 30 minutes later, I go back to the top three I started and listen to them again. Okay. Well, so, kind of like picking out a color. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, so once I have my song though, that's when I actually trim my, my selects even more to match this song like we were just talking about. Yeah. And then from there, I'll do my color selection. Okay. And typically, actually, I skipped a set. Before the color, I add all my titles. So any lower thirds, any titles, anything. And then I do my color, spit out a first draft, make sure I fully exported and rendered it all the way. So it's an actual MP4 or MOV file on my computer. Watch that. Say, ooh, miss that. Ooh, that mm, <laughs> cut's not timed quite right. So yeah. that's when I go back and say, okay, change it again. I'll say I'm pretty pretty lucky with clients over the over the last you know decade or so. I've gotten to know my clients pretty well, and I know what they expect. Mm -hmm. And they've because of that, they've also given me some freedom to say, why don't you do your thing? And so, like for example, on this last ranch job, I went all National Geographic on this thing. <laughs> but I captured like antelope people haven't seen in ten years, so like I, I was pretty pretty stoked about that, mm -hmm. um, which was just grace of God, frankly. But it was nice to be able to have a little bit more freedom, um, and I. Uh, was facing problems that I have never faced before, like shooting a hundred million dollar ranch that mm -hmm. spans literally the size of four major cities. And where do you start? What yeah. do you show? It's, it could be overwhelming. It was overwhelming. Yeah. It took me six weeks. <laughs> yeah. Really? Well, one of the big things you have to do is, I would imagine, is you've got to go in with a plan. That doesn't mean you get there and your plan doesn't change. Mm. But to the best of your ability, you have to have some understanding of like a topo or something and kind of what's where and how you're going to approach it, if you yeah, will. Yeah, and even like, I, so we went and met with the ranch owner and, you know, very powerful man. I can't even say his name, by the way. Um, but he drew, he, oh, you're going to turn left here and then you're going to see this headquarters. So make sure you shoot that. Then you're going to go down the road, blah, 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 blah. What a terrible, awful idea. Awful idea. Well, if, if, you know, one of the things I think we missed is that when you work with your client and you want to see the style that they prefer, sometimes, especially in the case of real estate, you may want to say, why don't you walk me through the property as if you were showing it to a client? Because then you understand chronological order, priority, and importance. Yeah. And literally, they don't say a word, they just do it. And that is how you get past preferential versus differential bias, by the way. I like it. Yeah. Because their subconscious is leading them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is exactly right. That being said, and going back to the topic of our question, I gave them the practical answer. As far as jump cuffs are concerned, as long as you're not talking about like all of a sudden the drone just turns and then you then you cut off the footage, that's an awkward jump cut. If you mean like stopping the footage at a perfect nice moment where you've made this great pan and it's smooth and cut it and then you go right into another motion... That is something that I think is great. Um, yeah. Something to consider too. I mean, we could really go down the rabbit hole, but let's say you show a bunch of uh, yaw motions where you're yawing to the right. You don't want to show yaw to the right, yaw to the right, yaw to the right, yaw to the right. You want to show yaw to the right. Oh, I forgot to do the orbit the other way. Reverse the footage, yaw to the left. <laughs> like yeah. You have to have diversity. Otherwise, you're going to bore people. So keep it fresh. Keep it clean. Don't be afraid to excite people. And yeah, I mean, I just actually, going through all my notes, I took them through the entire workflow. But typically, mm. I see editing as, as steps on a staircase where step number one is, okay, watch all the footage and mark which clips I like. 
Step number two, take the clips I like and actually drop them into Final Cut Pro. Step number three is take the selects from those clips, mark them as a favorite, and then drop them in the timeline. I mark them as a favorite, so if there's, if I'm you know further in the storyline, I'm like, oh, I just want to show 10 more seconds of that. I can just go into my favorite section and then increase the time of that particular clip and drop it in. Hmm. So the favorites is like helps me organize. So then the next step is once I get all the selects in my timeline, that's when I go in and actually do the major clipping where I'm making sure that I'm not showing any awkward or fast moving footage at all. And then I'm adding music and then I'm adding my lower thirds. And well, then I'm trimming before my lower thirds to make sure that shot selection goes with the beat of the music. Then I do my lower thirds. Then I do my color, spit out my first draft. And you can see we're already at step like eight or nine. Yeah. So a couple of questions come to mind. One is, do you ever, do you ever prioritize music over the shots? Meaning if you've got a jump cut and it's just not working to end the shot where you want to, but you love the music, how do you deal with that? You just maybe move shots around, reorder them or something? I do do that, but sometimes if the music is that good and it's making like a point, like let me go back to that video and show you. This is a perfect example. About 15 seconds in, you'll see kind of like the dun 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 and you like kind of feel it building. It's building, yeah. Yeah, so I played a slower shot and then added in the client's logo. This is one of the best videos I've ever done, by the way. The production that I'm working on right now asked if they could buy some of this footage. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Mm -hmm. So then my other question, I wish we had this up for everybody, but that's okay. I know. Um, And I can't show this because it's in mediation right now, too. Oh, bummer. It's not on YouTube? I mean, the the marketing ad is? They took it all down? No, No, that's not true. It's there. It's just that Paul likes a little separation. Um, anyways, moving <laughs> along, what, how do you decipher, determine how long a particular shot can be? So is there a point at the which, song. okay, so always sh- a song. All right. Yeah. And if a client is like, the shots are moving too fast, which in that video they were, and he wanted a long elongated. Okay. So he I just had... doubled the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four shot change. One, two, three, four, one, two, gotcha. three, four shot change. Like, so again, it's just a multiple of okay. the of the beat yeah so do you hmm. see how like a little bit of math goes into it not much totally. but, but just like you can take uh, the technical and go creative with it like i've done with the vfx stuff um now we're taking the creative and going technical no it's funny you say math again because I, as i'm as you're sort of explaining how you do that i'm thinking okay so there's functions there it's like you you can't just add i mean you're basically doubling right there's math involved to actually solve for X, Mm -hmm. which is a good video. Exactly. Yeah, that's really fascinating. And you have still to, learning. You have to speak to the <laughs> subconscious. Still, right. It's just like this is how I explained it to a client. I just worked. We just worked with a big client to do a story about mapping. You'll see it come out. Um, Vic went out there, shot photos for us, sent them to the client. He goes, I sent this to the boss, and they said that's why we hired that team hmm. in one photo. So you have to speak to the subconscious, right? Your eyes have to look at this thing and go, damn, that's good, (laughs) right? And it has to be a natural reaction. Yeah. And if you don't get that like eye-opening, excited, giddy feel from your client, you did not nail it, the furthest thing from it. And I know some people will never take real estate jobs seriously and put time into it, but guess what? I did, and my quality went up, and then I got bigger clients, and then I got Marriott. And then I got bigger clients and now I work for the studios again. And it's like, if you focus on quality with every single person that you serve, that becomes your reputation. Well said. I love it. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Polly Wally Doodle all day. <laughs> and my name is Rob AskDroneU.com for your questions. <laughs> love it, Rob. <laughs>